welcome everybody. Welcome Zara, welcome Ira, welcome Richard, Patricia, Zara, Anna, Hussam, Melanie, Elise, Hannah, Ricardo, and Georgia. I'm so excited to have you today um, as our teacher for the next uh, critical making session on um, um, on yeah, all things sustainable making. And I'm extremely excited uh, about the new topic, which is integrating local knowledge. And I'm yeah, very humbled that Georgia Nicolaou from Institute for Commun is here to teach us about uh, how to integrate local knowledge, because in their space um, that she co-founded, uh, Institute for Commun, um, that is all about uh, commons, all about climate crisis uh, mitigation, about uh, community work. Uh, they are doing very much like all different kinds of uh, integration of local knowledge on different like levels and so I'm super eager to learn from you um, how you're doing this um, in your space and how we we can learn from you um, to adapt uh, these uh, learnings that you have throughout the past uh, many years um, in the space and in your work um, in our own uh, circumstances and organizations and projects so I'm very happy to welcome Georgia and to hand over the floor to you um, and to uh, start the session. Great, thank you, Sandra. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon. For me, it's good morning. I'm, I'm speaking from Sao Paulo, so it's 9 a.m. here, 9, 13 past. Um, so my name is Georgia, and I'm really happy to be here. I'm being part of the, of the gig community since the beginning, so we're talking about 10 years now, and um, and I've seen uh, the the how we developed as a, as a network and and nice people coming along. So I'm really happy to be here in this project, uh, which I think is a really important one, and hopefully we'll do more, many more. And I've seen some of your prototypes in the wiki, and uh, really happy to be here also with you. I know that some of you are, are not uh, with good connections or are in the train, but maybe just for us to start, it would be nice just for you to present yourself. I don't know where you're coming from, uh, if it's evening or afternoon or morning. If you can't speak, maybe write in the chat, how are you arriving? Um, and also, uh, I wanted to know a bit about uh, what 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 are you expecting today if you have anything uh specific that you would like to address uh, when we speak about integrating local knowledge so if you could uh, just give me a hello either in the mic or in the chat hello Hello also from me. I already introduced myself, but it's so nice to be here for once to hear this talk live. <laughs> Great. Welcome. Where are you speaking from? Uh, I, I'm speaking from Finland, from this small uh, small town called Iti in, in central Finland. And uh, is it afternoon here now for you? or? Yeah, it's 2.15 here, so. And Sarah writes in the chat, hey, Georgia, nice to meet you. Where is Sarah coming from? She's in France, so it's um, lunchtime. Okay. Hello, it's me, Hi. Volga William from Uganda, one of the refugees, uh, Pagrenia. So I'll be great to listens and talk and hear from them. Hello, what time is it for you now? It's uh, now 3 p.m. day to our evening, yeah. Nice. I hope you can hear me because we have internet connection, so I don't know. Am I no, loud and I clear? 
Yeah, I hear you well, yeah. Okay, thank you. I didn't introduce myself. I'm a little bit late, so I don't know. Maybe most of the people have introduced themselves. I'm Boga William, I'm my executive director for, for Youth Empowerment Foundation. This is a refugees lead uh, initiative that helps young people in uh, digital platforms and uh, maker space also at the same time. And uh, we have uh, a library at our space where we improve the culture reading for young people as a refugees. This is also one way and a platform where we can connect and interact with so many people. Thank you so much. Back to you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. So uh, we are in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, and uh, uh, we have this device, the urination female body device, uh, Shishi. Uh, it's it's started with the idea like one year and a half ago and uh, in, in Europe when I met Patricia we uh, she have the initial the initiative and uh, we started to uh, develop that the concept and uh, when we go to to Greece to work to refugees, the idea becomes bigger because we saw all the, the vulnerabilities in the camp and uh, the situation who the migrants have when they are in a place who is the environment is not safe from women. So, and I become, I come from Brazil and I know how it's difficult from people uh, in the slums, the favelas now and uh, in communities and uh, I'm social worker. I know it, it's difficult for women in, in the streets when they don't have a, a, a safe environment or a toilet close to them. And uh, yeah, this it's our project. The project we, we hope continue um, and uh, develop the, the first um, prototype soon. And, and I uh, welcome, uh, how I say, uh, it's really nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for presenting. Thank Great. you. And uh, reading from the chat, Ira wrote, Ira Emanuel from Pagirinha Refugee Settlement in Uganda, working on a gravity-fed irrigation kit for refugees. And Oscar uh, says, I'm Oscar from Burundi and founder of EcoFitTex. EcoFitTex, yeah. Okay, so thank Hello. you very much. Ah, hi. And, hi. Uh, this is Anna from Quito, Ecuador. And I am working on a project uh, related to um, agriculture and uh, schools populations. So I work with, with students, but I also uh, relate the project with the community from, a from the neighborhood. And, and this is what I'm doing now. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Wonderful. Anybody else want to speak or should we go on? Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Zafsia Elize. I'm from Cameroon. Actually, it is uh, 1 p.m. here. 1 p.m. West African time. My project is Neutral a 3D printed digital stethoscope. And um, the idea came when there was uh, the COVID crisis, because most of the time when we, 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 when we see a doctor, oh, we, we also think about his best partner, which is the stethoscope. 
I used to, to see doctors with their stethoscope on their neck. So, and when uh, the COVID crisis started, there was the barrier, the respect of the distance barrier. And I was thinking that how could the doctor respect the distance with the, the type of stethoscope they are using now. So the, the idea came to develop uh, a wireless digital stethoscope. Uh, actually, I uh, started, I uh, printed some parts, the membrane of the stethoscope. I've bought other and bought uh, a, my, a small microphone, uh, the Bluetooth module and uh, it remained to buy uh, a LM, LM393 module. So I'm also developing the algorithm so that, and to develop an app so that as the digital part is, is concerned, it will be easy for the doctor to, to read in his cell phone without having a long, a long time contact with That's um, the, the, the main. Thank you, Elise. And I saw Richard uh, also writing, hey everyone, it's a pleasure to be back here today. I'm from Rhino Camp Refugee Settlement in Uganda and it's sunny evening, uh, 3 p.m. 20. Uh, I am working on DIY automatic water dispenser for communities in the refugee settlement. Love. And Muga, Muga says hi, Muga William from Paganinia Refugee Settlement, Uganda, working on house prototype, uh, the responsive open source modular house prototype uh, for the Paraginia satellite, um, sharing media architecture knowledge. Um, so it's for post-conflict refugee co-creation and innovation architecture. And I can add to that that Buga also held a community um, presentation for GIG um, around the open source modular housing project, uh, which I can very much recommend. It's in the uh, GIG YouTube channel. Thank you all. Thank you. Very impressive. So wonderful work you've been doing. So really happy to be here. So I'm just start to share, I'm gonna start sharing my, my presentation and uh, I'm happy to answer questions throughout the, the presentation. Uh, also ask Sandra to uh, help me if someone raised their hand, if I'm not seeing. Also, please do uh, also write on the chat if you don't wanna speak on the mic or just interrupt me in the mic, which is also fine. I think that um, I, I would try to be also synthetic so we can have a, converse, a proper conversation. So because I'm really interested in actually being uh, useful for you uh, rather than um, just having a talk that won't make sense. So please help me with that and, 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 and come with me. So let's see. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. thank you. Okay, so um, I'm from Instituto Procomum. We are a not-for-profit organization that was uh, co-founded by me and some others uh, in 2016. So we are turning seven years old. Um, so we like to think that all, all knowledge is are welcome. And when we speak about knowledge, um, so in Portuguese, you have a word that is saber. Uh, you, you can say that, you know, 
there's different types of knowledges, not only the ones coming from the books, but also the one coming from experience, intuitive, uh, spiritual, or ancestral, or all knowledges are welcome. Um, so we work to develop innovative and experimental ways to engage and mobilize people to create and protect the commons. We understand the commons are, as um, a relational, uh, practical, you know, way of living where we are co-responsible for ourselves and for each other and for the world, the earth. So it's really, you know, everything that we share as uh, resources within a community with given protocols. And it's really mediated through relation and communication, right? So. I cannot uh, create a commons if I don't communicate and relate to the other being. Um, one thing that we do is also re-grant. So we do financial support for institutions, collectives, uh, and we also have uh, grants, like small grants and, and scholarships. Uh, and we have a, a, a space, right? Um, so today, Sandra uh, and the critical making uh, team, they invited me to speak about integrating local knowledge. I put some questions here. If you want, you can answer uh, in the chat, it would be really nice. But also if you don't want just to think about what is local knowledge, you know, where, where is it? I mean, for people that are working within countries transnationally, Let's say I'm from Brazil, but I'm working in a refugee camp somewhere else. What do I understand as local knowledge? Uh, where is the local knowledge? You know, so I think it's a nice thing to think about, you know, the thing that I'm creating. What does it mean to integrate local knowledge, right? Also, one, one question that I think is really important always to do, and not only once, but many times, is who are my communities or who is my community? And I put that in plural also because uh, we, for example, at Procomun, we understand communities in a really broad sense. So we have the communities of the space, the lab, but we also have the communities around the space or in the neighborhoods around the space. But then we also have the communities of like, for example, international communities. For example, GIG is part of uh, one community for us. So we have communities in different levels and we have networked communities, right? So we have a number of communities that we uh, engage in networking so that we have a number of communities that are also engaging as networks, uh, understanding that sometimes communities can be closed spaces. Uh, and then when you relate to other communities, you can have that friction, right? Uh, that comes fresh air coming from other networks and, and communities. So, and then, so how are they involved in your prototypes? You know, do you know which community are you developing this prototype for, right? Uh, so, because in order for you to integrate local knowledge, I think it's also important to understand what am I talking about? Who am I talking about? And, um, and there's one thing that I think um, it's important to highlight. So Bracomo invests a lot in long-term relationships, which I, I know is not always possible, not always the case, you know. Uh, we've been in the same space, in the same territory, although we also do now, um, we also prototype our methodologies in other regions. But it's always a challenge. That's why you always have to find local partners, right? Because you're not going to have time to develop a long-term relationship, which, which I believe is really, really important uh, in order for you to actually incorporate, embody um, the, the territory uh, you are related to. Um, and in terms of tools, we like a lot to work with open calls and mappings. So once I get, and then we also have uh, publications about how to do that, that I will show you later uh, in our website, they're also in English. So when I, when I get to a, to a territory, you know, where, where's the, the invisible? There's always what people tell you and there's always what 
actually exists. So when we got to Santos and the region where we are now, you know, the thing that I heard here the most is though there's nothing here, there's nothing happening here, nothing happens here, right? Because it's so close to Sao Paulo, you know, that, you know, it's only orbiting around Sao Paulo. And it's not true, you know, if you actually look through open calls, through mapping, and to really, you know, get to the, you know, the other like surfaces, you see that there's so many things going on. There's so many innovators doing stuff, you know, in an everyday basis that they're just not called innovators. They're not self-called and they're not recognized as innovators. That's why we call citizen innovation, which is the solutions that people create in an everyday basis. If we think about how people live in such uh, complex uh, situations, how do they get themselves through the day? They count on each other and they count on their creativity. And this creativity generates a lot of innovation. And that's where we look to. That's the kind of prototypes we are looking into. So this is something that we haven't uh, translated yet because it's really recent. But uh, recently we made like a, a, like a methodology of our pedagogy, let's say. Uh, our, our way of doing things, right? And I just wanted to put here, so I just to see like, um, what is the principles of our pedagogy, right? Um, so faith in people and in the encounters. So each people matters and the participation of everybody is fundamental to reach the results of each group of each initiative. So really believe in people, believe in the, the encounters that happen. Um, the abundance logic. So we really trust, you know, people's value and our values uh, uh, horizontally. So uh, um, if you have like a feast, you know, the party house, or really think about this uh, from this perspective. So affectivity. So the uh, care. So care is really important. If you have affection and care uh, is also a practice, a, a daily practice. Uh, if you don't take care of yourself and then the others then, and, and build together uh, a caring space, then it's, it's really hard to make anything that matters. Serendipity, so not always you find what you're looking for, but you have to pay attention to the collective findings so that you don't lose things um, that you're not looking to, right? That you can impress yourself also with things that were not in the initial planning. So learning by doing and doing by learning. So both, you know, practice uh, feeds um, theory and the theory uh, feeds practice, right? So really the, like the, the whole area of innovation and hands-on and the educational area, they walk together in the same of like how I learn things and how I feed into different kinds of understanding of the world. So a practical experience is all super necessary because it generates knowledge and provoke the creation of solutions. And then we can also reflect on and etc. It, um, so simplicity um, and so attention to the essence of each uh, encounter, of each space, the intention of generating engagement uh, with people's lives and people's knowledge. And then um, valuing like the contradictory or the conflict or divergence. So, uh, we should be looking at conflict with naturality and, 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 and kindness and serenity in the sense that the collective process are always, always permeated by them. Um, and if we look that with them as a gift, we can then learn by with them and, 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 and go deeper in the, our unlearning processes and learning processes. And I think this is at the core also of when we think about the commons as a collective practice, that the agreements and um, mediation processes are really important, right? We are uh, always uh, 
you know, uh, in the process of uh, negotiating when we are living with others and building things with others. Um, so lab is here. So you see, this is the state of Sao Paulo and then you have the coastal area and here we are in the coastal area of the state of Sao Paulo. Uh, and our space has a uh, 1200 square meters and it's 50, 50 kilometers of Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is the biggest city of Latin America, even though it's not the capital of Brazil, it is the most, uh, the whole economic uh, center of it. So Lab Pro Comum, which is our space, is a space open to creators, makers, and curious people who want to test prototypes and develop projects with social impact. Uh, we like to think that we are a space where people are encouraged to network and collaborate with one another, forming communities and sharing dreams. What happens at the lab? So workshops and trainings, residencies, circuits, uh, we have a school for artists and social entrepreneurs, study groups, working groups, celebrations, and much more. So I'll, I'm gonna bring you some. So this is some of the, this is about this year, right? In this year, we had an activation fund. So we had an open fund for our community to develop projects. Uh, we had 32 people presenting the really different projects that are connected to our working groups. Uh, the working groups are connected to, you know, arts and um, uh, climate uh, change, uh, community processes. So you have a number of different, uh, such as, you know, sewing working group or, you know, um, uh, a hacker and uh, open tech working group. Uh, conscious consumption working group, zero waste working group. Uh, you have um, um, permaculture working group. You have uh, agriculture organic working group. So you have like so such different kinds of you know working groups, and and they activate a number of workshops and prototypes that are open for the communities um, throughout the year. Um, you see that we highlight uh, about the majority of people being black. That's why, this is why in Brazil, we have a big racism problem. So that is an intersectional problem within class and race and gender. So you see that the, the most excluded uh, population in Brazil are black women, poor. So uh, you have to look always when you want to say, fight inequality and you want to do, you know, create conditions for people, you want to look at where, uh, where is the historically excluded. I know, I don't know if you know, but Brazil was the last country to abolish uh, slavery. So we still are leaving the consequences of a process that didn't include slaved people, neither economically or socially. Uh, and that uh, gave uh, room to you know, undignified uh, housing problems, no work or uh, informal work, and a number of other problems that come out of this. So we really look into this uh, at our work. Um, we have special uh, projects, but we are mostly transversely looking at, you know, looking at the most vulnerable population. Uh, historically, uh, social economically excluded. Um, we have a room, we have two rooms there, so with uh, equipped residency, so you are all welcome also to come and stay at our space. We are always looking to collaborate with artists, hackers, and just ordinary people that want to develop stuff and stay our, at our space. Um, we have the Colaboradora, which is our school uh, that we, we and, and one thing that is important to say, most of this is made through open calls. Uh, the open call is the big methodology that we use to have diverse groups coming. Uh, so we, la we launch open calls and of course we do a great work of mobilization, people go to the territories, you know, talk to the communities, 
and, and speak about the lab and, and activate the, the spaces. Uh, but it's a great uh, tool of, you know, um, if you if you rightly, correctly used, of going out of the bubble, of not always talking to the same people. This is some pictures of our space. We have like this big maker warehouse space. Uh, we have the garden, the agriculture, permaculture, caring space, atelier for you know, rehearsals, workshops, um, co-working space, and so on. So this is not, this is not, so this is how we, um, something that I wanted to highlight of how we do things. So I, I spoke already some of it, but just to, for you to see that, you know, um, so collaboration, so openness and dialogue, you know, and this also relates to how the team should be prepared to eat, you know, to look at the, the, the unseen, let's say, care, and then communities of practice, right? We are really interested in people that are united by common interests. And I think that this is really important. You know, sometimes you look at someone and you, you think there's nothing in common with that person. Uh, but when you start doing things together, you know, it's a really nice way of connecting with people uh, that is different, for example, from social media, where we always, you know, having our opinions and sometimes, you know, we are, we are much more in common than it seems like, right? And then doing stuff together uh, creates bonds, you know, that are really interesting and could, can be even more, you know, trustworthy, you know? Uh, and then experimentation investigation. So really have the spirit of experimenting in it. You know, you're researching, you're investigating, you don't have to find the right answer uh, necessarily. You know, the process is also important. And then uh, network. So how do you add new uh, actors and strengthen the articulation between different interest groups? And then you document it, record, and monitor the collective learning process so other people can benefit from it. You know, that's why the free and open culture is so important for us. As in, you know, knowledge should be uh, uh, for everybody. Knowledge is a commons, you know, and we really believe in that. So how do you document it? It's also a learning process of how to well document processes, right? And then how do you share them? Because one thing is documented, but then you, you leave it for yourself. So how do you make the documentation live? You know, it's another level of work. And, and I think all of us in the community of open, um, open uh, information, we are always looking in, in, into the, the best ways of doing that. And I think it's also something that there's no such thing as, oh, we got there. There's never the ending point, right? It's always a given processes. And as I said before, collective agreements, you know, uh, we should be speaking about agreements beforehand, before doing things, we should be really clear of our intentions. Uh, we should be really clear of why are we doing what we're doing? What do I want to take out of it? You know, what's important for me? What's my boundaries? Where are my limits? Because if we don't speak, if we don't uh, make collective agreements, then the, the potential of our, 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 our joint efforts are, are way less. Uh, okay, um, this is just something about, you know, the region where we are. Uh, studies have shown that centers can be submerged in 30 years. So uh, it's really something that we started looking. Uh, and it's almost also like a house for indigenous population and Afro um, Brazilian population, because Santos has the biggest port in Latin America. So that's where, I mean, this East area was also where the Portuguese uh, arrived. So many indigenous were killed, uh, most of them, but there's a lot of them who are still there. And there are also many, you know, ships came in, coming from there. So you have also an important story of, you know, Afro-Brazilians that hasn't been told. Uh, and we are also working on untold stories. It's a big prototype for us. So I'll, 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 I'll go through with, for, with you. It's one of our projects this year that it's uh, connected to it. 
we made a storm lab. We call it storm lab because it's um, rapidly, you know, developing prototypes connected to something. And this storm lab uh, of blackness was a citizen innovation lab uh, to prototype projects that protagonize Black's history and cities development in the educational and touristic area. So we made an open call for local participants. Uh, they were formed four different groups and then we gave them a grant to develop their idea and then we also offered them one month of mentorship. And then there was four prototypes, right? So one of them was Realeza, so royalness, uh, which is writing workshops for teenagers uh, in a peripheral neighborhood, uh, using the five senses to create a safe and instigating environment for creation. Uh, the other one was Aconchego Ilera, that promotes tourism and care for Black women and afro indigenous ancestral knowledge. So it was a workshop, you know, uh, that was everything was uh, you know as 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 prototype was also you know documented in order that people you know also can have access to it and replicate it. The other one was Afro food tourism, so promotes tourism for the young black population with visits in historical sites with black protagonism in another town which is Bertioga, which is also in the coastal area. Uh, and the five nods, which is storytelling project that aims in developing the history behind the Bayomi, which is a doll created by Black ancestors in the fourth trip to Brazil, with a short film and small publication for schools. So this is uh, some of the pictures of the, um, the prototypes. Um, and, and then there's also links to the videos. Um, let me see if we can have uh, just a glimpse, not all of it, so, so you can have a... Uh... Desde ontem, nós estamos em Peruíbe, no Amã, na Cama e Café. I know that there's not, they're not usually the prototypes that we uh, think of when we think about uh, makerspace, but um, it's really, uh, for me, it's really um, a happy choice we make when we think about uh, what technology is and what knowledge is. So all of these are prototypes, technolo technological prototypes. And um, we like to think that, you know, uh, for example, uh, the slave people that came uh, uh, to Brazil, you know, they are so technological because 
they are still more than half percent of the population is uh, the black population in Brazil. So how they are, how are they still alive? Because they are really developed tools and innovation and technologies, and, and most of them are connected to you know care and, um, and sharing knowledge, you know the, that sustains life, you know. And that includes uh, arts and culture and relational technologies, uh, storytelling and, and other things. Uh, just another one, another prototype. So when you look at these, what do you think this guy is doing? You know, what, think about it. What, you know, what is it doing? Maybe a house or... No, they actually developing a prototype of... Um, stage mobile stage so this working group is a scenic working group uh, and they develop you know uh, inventions that could can be used for other groups it's called traquitanas and this is what they, they created a mobile stage see that you can do uh, presentations in the streets um so they use they reuse discarded materials they take the Gambiaja culture, as we say in Brazil, to an artistic and propositional level, creating devices that can be used by more people. So this is the mobile stage, a cart created from discarded wood and other materials with carpentry and welding techniques that can be used by our entire community for small performances and technical support. This is another prototype, one of the working groups. Um, this woman here, uh, this is uh, Roberta Ribeiro, she was the student of our entrepreneur uh, school uh, some years ago. She's an um, arts and craft uh, woman. She sews, she, she, she sells in the, in, the, in the workshops of the cities uh, uh, in the coastal area. And she met the mother Katia Stejero, which is uh, like a spiritual leader of uh, one of the Afro-Brazilian religions. Uh, and they were experiencing economic problems. So Roberta used the infrastructure of our lab to create a sewing atelier and prototype a course for seven women, most of them trans women. And then the students who finished the course were given portable machines and then they can sew at home. So she tested the, she, she never actually had teach people like this. So she was prototyping a course, the course went well. So now she's offering two more and she got actually support from Rotary International, which is, I mean, we never got support from Rotary, you know, it was, it's something that, you know, we, we have, we gave her support, but she was out uh, looking for support and now they have uh, two new classes next year. And the idea is to, co to become a cooperative and formalize the collective. And uh, the, the good part of being at the lab is that you are exchanging with other people all the time. So this guy here is from the other working group that you just saw, the mobile stage. And then next year, we're gonna do with Ricardo, who is here, uh, the lab storm related to climate um, um, uh, crisis in uh, Olinda, where she's from in the Northeast. And this is just to show you that uh, it's possible to create methodologies that can be replicated in other territories, right? If you have the local partners and um, once you document your methodology uh, and then make it, you, you can uh, improve it in a never ending path to improve the way you do it, you know? So this is our networks. If you wanna look for us, uh, this is my contact and like in our website, you find our publications um, here in the, um, you have the publications of our, of our methodologies and a lot of them is in English. Uh, so I think you're gonna have access to this presentation then you just click on it and then you see uh, our, our a lot of our publications are in English and some also in Spanish besides Portuguese. So that's it. Now I see that Ricardo was helping me. 
Thank you, Ricardo. Ah, no, so yeah, Thunderbolt, not Storm, yeah. But I like Storm, yeah. you know, I think it's a cute name. The Lab yeah. Storm is in Olinda, you know? The Lab Storm is in Olinda. Juliana is from Casa Criatura, you don't know each other. <laughs> Hi, Juliana. Yeah, so we're going to do in partnership with Casa Criatura, the lab, yeah. Hello, guys. I think we lost some the ground control to major talk. <laughs> I'm here again. Um, yeah. Sorry, my Zoom just uh, didn't want to work anymore. I think it wants to have a weekend or something. <laughs> but now I'm back. Uh, and I just uh, quit in the last slide. So I heard everything before, which was great. Uh, thank you so much, Georgia. It was uh, super interesting to learn more about what you're doing in the lab and what um, is happening in all the different projects uh, and your approach. I actually even made um, like a photo of your slide that was still in Portuguese and Google translated it <laughs> and shared with participants. Uh, that was super interesting also to see um, what your pedagogy is uh, in the lab. And I would love to hear more about um, like how you do these open calls and how do you reach people from outside uh, your original community um, that already knows about you and how you yeah, what this process looks like. Juliana, if you need to make questions in Portuguese, I can answer you in Portuguese as well, okay? Um, so, Sandra, you want to know about the open calls? Is that it? Just to, because I was reading the chat, can you? Yes, yes. So how, how do you do this process um, to reach people outside your existing, like, people who don't know about you already. Yeah. So um, the first thing that we did when we arrived in Santos uh, before even having the space was making a mapping. So we, we made workshops with, uh, with an open, um, open platform of mapping. And we started to pinpoint with, together with other people like that we called spaces and people that we should approach that, that are connected to this wider um, vision of citizen innovation. So what is citizen innovation for us? Again, citizen innovation is everything that is related to local knowledge turned into innovation. So people that are creating um, solutions for everyday life, right? The difference between us and for example, you know, a more, let's say, startup, uh, techie, uh, is that we first, we look at what people are, that suffers the most are, is creating in order to survive. Uh, and we understand this at citizen innovation, you know? Um, so we are not looking to create uh, things that uh, we think is good or that uh, just for the sake of creating. Uh, but we actually looking at, you know, what solutions are people already giving and how can we give support to them? How can we make uh, uh, them go even more in their potentialities uh, and, and wider their networks, you know, and uh, have access to other knowledges or, you know, improve um, their creativity and their, and their prototypes in order to improve their own lives in their own territories. So this is really where we, uh, it's always important to, to remember why, why are we doing what we are doing, you know? Uh, we are doing what we're doing because we believe, you know, in an, in an equal society, you know? It's really a political view. So we never, we never lose this in our mind that, you know, we are aiming at equality. We are aiming at, you know, digni dignified uh, housing, you know, food on the table, you know, health for people, you know, so uh, we have to remember that we are in a really unequal world, extremely unequal world, and innovation for us, it has to be at service of reducing inequalities. So this is always at the background of our work. 
and of what we understand as innovation and social innovation and so citizen innovation. So the first thing we did was this mapping, right? We made a number of workshops, bringing people from different places of Brazil and, and the world. We actually brought people from GIG. So we had Nanjira coming and more. And this was the beginning of, of the, the organization, even before we had the space. Right, so we were engaging different people with the local communities, with the international and regional communities. Uh, so by then we had already a network, right, creating and uh, etc. Uh, and then uh, we started doing these circuits, the open innovation circuits, um, um, and the open calls. Of course, they were getting they were there throughout the years. They got better and better because we count a lot on the mouth to mouth, right? So people that participated in the editions then work for us as mobilizators for the next ones, you know, and then activating their own networks. So we really count on the mouth to mouth uh, uh, of, you know, how people like tell their neighbors or, you know, if you are someone from like, if you're a a hacker community, you speak to your hackers, friends. If you're someone from the hip hop community, then you speak throughout the hip hop community. If you're someone from, I don't know, the uh, music uh, community or, you know, the um, academic community. So really uh, counting on people. And we actually, uh, in, in most of our projects, we have paid people that during the open call go uh, through the territories and like kind of sit with people and make the application with them, you know, uh, or, you know, we even had the, the possibility of people making, you know, oral applications or like for the open calls, you know, or like physical, they would go to the space and say, I want to apply. Uh, of course, we always count on social media too, uh, but we know that there's limits to it. So, we would go to the, to spaces or like for example one of our projects i remember simoni went to um the indigenous uh territory and she sat uh with you know them in a circle and then she spoke about the project and you know why would we think would be interesting for them and then they decided to apply so it's really an active let's say you know uh gold mining uh, uh, work uh, in the process of mobilizing for the open call uh, process. And then once, once the, the open call is closed, we do what we call care ship. Instead of curatorship, we really do a care ship. So we will look for a number of things while selecting uh, uh, people uh, and um, and, and some people that apply for one open call, then they are not selected. Then sometimes there's another one that they are selected. Depends on the criteria of that project, of you know what we are aiming at, you know. And as I said, we always look uh, in any scale to reduce inequalities. We are always looking at it. So we all, we will always see the background of this person, what kind of access she had you know, and uh, what the story of life and etc. And we usually uh, call in for um, uh, interviews. So it's a chance for us to get to know the person and the person gets to know us in the space, uh, which is a really important phase of, of, of like creating. Um, and it's interesting to see that when we do the evaluation, a lot of people say that the Procommons work is starts even before you are selected. So a number of people, uh, they say as an example, the interview, that they were never well treated in an interview, uh, so well treated in an interview, you know, that they felt home, that they felt warmly welcomed, that they felt, you know, they were, you know, important and valued since the interview. So I think this is also important to, to, let, to let you know that, you know, um, from some time on now we do evaluations and we really see the result of being uh, an organization that is looking to uh, all the details, you know, how the details count, how, you know, the care work is a really uh, presence work and it's in the small gestures, 
also, you know, you're not going to be able to reduce inequalities by yourself, but you can, you know, offer small gestures to people. And uh, this is one of the tools that we have developed as, 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 as our care process. And um, Marilia, that's one of our directors, she just launched the publication of, you know, uh, care for, for um, let me see the name, proper name, the care in the building of the commons, a methodology of care for collective space. Unfortunately, it's uh, still only in Portuguese, but we are gonna have it in English. I'll, I'm just gonna uh, quickly show it to you because I think this is really important also when we speak about innovation, you know, and in uh, complex areas such as, for example, refugees. So uh, this is the methodology. Um, and so this is like the graphic she made, um, care, body and commons, and then territory management practice. And then inside you have, you know, presence as a proposition of to exchange, small gestures, network and listening. And it's amazing how, you know, the, the things that sometimes we don't, we take it for granted are revolutionary. So for example, listening. Listening to yourself and to the others is a great technology, you know, it's a, a really important one uh, for us to create, you know, a commons uh, within uh, a different people. Um, and then, uh, for example, uh, another one, which is the presence. So um, being present is a really important tool, you know, uh, because um, it's a, it can be really transformative, you know, if we think about the different contexts where people are coming from, you know, uh, so yeah. Wow, thank you. That was an amazing answer and very, very helpful and probably also helpful uh, for those participants now that are also very closely connected to a space. Um, Vuga, for example, is running um, the uh, uh, space also. And um, so, and I see in the chat, uh, there's um, a comment about uh, that's really a commitment to care and responsible innovation. So appreciative and Elise is saying, saying very instructive presentation and Uga says wow wow this presentation is just on point and then somebody just wanted to say something. I have a quick comment and it relates to Vuga. I don't know if Vuga is still online but yes he is hi Vuga is connecting to the audio so I'll wait for the connection for the audio connection up into three two one but in one of the sessions Vuga the session that we shared the link to YouTube Vuga was asking about uh, how he could get content for his lab you know how he could get how he could he could get content training workshops material and maybe George brings a nice perspective on trying to listen to your community and what can you bring from your community inside the lab to create this content. I was just wondering, I'm sorry, brainstorming. No, no that's great. Thing, yeah, so one thing that's really George. funny that, uh, that uh, joke, uh, inside joke that we do is that. Uh, we say that the Procommon team is like, if you like, you know, just passing around the street and you make a question to any of us, we're gonna say, don't you wanna create a working group? You know, that's like our, like a pattern answer. Oh, do you wanna create a working group? So, you know, in the end, we're really looking like for people, you know, to bring their knowledge into the space. And then our program comes out of the working groups. Of course, there's, there's a part of it that we offer, right? Um, there's one thing that um, our uh, uh, former Ministry of Culture and uh, uh, important singer, Brazilian singer uh, and, and composer, Gilberto Gil, there's a music, there's a song that he says, the, the people, knows what they, people know what they want, 
but they also want what they don't know. So I think this is important, you know, that you both offer what people want, but also surprise them by having a curatorship, you know, uh, that comes from different uh, places. Um, that's why we are really local and really international. Some people think this is contradictory, but we were born like that. We were born extremely rooted in the local uh, where we are, but we extremely international. And these two create a great, great, great composition, you know, uh, of, you know, taking people out of their own, you know, um, split pace and like widening up the possibilities, right? Uh, and then we had we have great examples of like people that don't speak English participating in you know uh, international projects uh, and and then that also sums up to their portfolios and to their experiences. So it's really nice. But um, uh, so we do we our program from the lab comes out of the working groups composed with things of we offer of projects that we uh, fundraise for. So it's a composition of both, but you know, having the working groups is a really interesting thing to see, you know, because you, it's not that we, you know, we are not saying what uh, people should do, be doing, but we are actually giving an infrastructure, the space, the support, the mentoring for them to develop their own yeah, ideas and creativity, you know, and that's in a wide range of, you know, uh, knowledges and interests, right? So as I showed to you, you know, you have, you know, people that are more hands-on, that uh, work at the warehouse, sewing, creating things, you know, creating games, uh, cardboard games, or, and, uh, but then you also have, you know, the hackers, you know, they're at the computer room that, that I didn't show you in the picture, but we have a 3D printer, we have a laser cut, you know, we have uh, Arduino workshops, we have, uh, software, free software festivals, you know, there's a great um, story that uh, um, of the, one of the entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs that uh, was part of our, our open school, she uh, was a cook, so she was making like pies to sell, nowadays she has her own bar, but uh, once there was the, I think two months ago, we had this, uh, free software installation in Stylefest, which is like a practice of, you know, uh, and then she was there, she took her computer, an old computer that was uh, unused for like years. And then the hackers, the, the hackers group, they, they, they installed the free software and then the computer uh, went back to life, right? And this wouldn't be happening if we didn't have, you know, such a diverse space of people that uh, maybe usually wouldn't be uh, working together, you know, because uh, we are, if you are looking for, let's say, um, call or something, maybe you were in a day at the lab, you're gonna say, this is a community center. And then maybe you're gonna say, no, this is an art center. And then maybe you're gonna say, no, this is a tech center. We are none of that in the end. We are really, you know, uh, commons uh, centers. So we have people that are want to create, you know, uh, common technologies to be used uh, uh, in a daily basis uh, uh, or, and then when I say used, uh, I don't mean only, you know, uh, basic things, which I think is really important. For example, house. We also have a, we have a working group of social housing that is from architects and urban planners, right? So, but when I mean useful, uh, we also understand that beauty, statics, you know, uh, celebration, arts, uh, storytelling, they're all as important and as you know, dignified as social housing and economic um, economic uh, alternatives. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to show this picture because I think it's a really nice picture of uh, uh, Luana with the hackers. So this is her computer. See, and uh, and this is the text that Victor wrote about you know how they installed uh, the free software in her computer 
that um, now she's been using. Uh, and the computer is like 10 to 15 years old and they, the, the, the computer is now working really nicely. And this is the, you know, like this hacker space and the people at the, the install fest. And one thing that I like a lot uh, is that also, you know, Victor and his, uh, 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 usually it's him. Um, he documents a lot and he writes in the blog, you know, so you can, you can, you can actually read the stories that are happening at the lab, you know, so we don't miss the serendipity moments, you know, uh, and then this becomes a memory. And then this becomes um, also the possibility of, uh, of uh, replicating and, and, and inspiring other stories. Super cool. Thank you so much. I don't want to take all the space, so please uh, unmute yourself if you have a question or write it in the chat and I can read it for you. And I have one more question I would like to ask if nobody else is <laughs> like jumping in. Um, and it's about um, people using uh, the space, like uh, the community that is coming um, and that is active in the working groups, um, when they are creating something, like they are creating um, hardware prototypes, for example, um, how, how are they integrating local knowledge? What would you say? Um, can you give us a few examples or like one example of how this is working for them and how, how, how you see that? Um... Yeah, I mean, what I what I think is that, you know, because so usually when you're at the space, you are you are uh, coexisting with other people. Right. And then you go to the collective kitchen and you have a coffee and then you go to a, you know, a meeting of like um, organization of the space, for example, or you go to, you know, some celebration, then you get to know and you are totally, you know, in the end, influenced by um, by what's happening there and what people are doing, you know. So I think this is one way of, you know, the the I don't know the how do you say the the good point of having a space. I don't think it's always necessary to have a space, but they, like I think one of the good points of having a space is that you know people will actually meet each other and they get influenced by one another realities and how, and this is usually, you know, really how people get influenced, you know, uh, to then, you know, create stuff, you know, even that sometimes you have an, an idea, but then the idea changes once, you know, you meet. And then one really nice thing of learning how to integrate is that if you do something that nobody comes or that nobody's interested, it's, Failure is also a really nice uh, way of, uh, of you know, uh, getting to know your community. Because if you promote something that you think is super nice, you're developing something that you think is super nice, but then nobody comes or shows up or are interested in doing something, then you should be thinking about, you know, wh what's, what's wrong. And, and, and then you should be asking people, you know, why, why they're not coming, why it's not interesting for them. You know, uh, but the thing is, usually, uh, it's really it's really not common that someone comes with an idea and doesn't change its mind in the course of doing. Because once you get along with other people, because like the working groups, they're not necessarily they know it all of the all of them know each other, right? So sometimes you are the guardian of a working group, but during the days people come, you know, and then. Um, our team, you know, presents people. So in the end, even like in the in the in the, the labs we do, like the storm lab and etc., you are kind of obliged to negotiate your idea. You know what I mean? Like you kind of have to be open to change your mind uh, and uh, listen into and be really at attentive to to what people are saying or, or, or wanting. Did I answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I like the approach of uh, changing one's idea. So that's also something I'm very excited to see about um, this program, like how from the beginning uh, to the end, 
um, every one of you is maybe changing their project, adapting um, the project or the idea, um, maybe creating something completely different uh, in the end because uh, you found out when asking the, the community around you um, how they find uh, your project useful or how they would interact with it or how they are actually interacting with the prototype, um, what, what will help them more and what would help the target group of your uh, projects uh, even more. Or maybe it's exactly the right thing, but you need to produce <laughs> I don't know, a high amount of numbers. And then, yeah, so yeah, that's nice thing, so many, yeah. And a nice thing to do is that you should do like demo days, right? So that you can, like, for example, uh, call people to come to the lab and test it. Or for example, go for a round in a neighborhood and see if people are interested in it, you know, and see what comes out of it. You know what I mean? So uh the, i think the the facility of having a space also it's also that you can like uh, really call people to come and, and and try out and then you're gonna see for yourself what's working or not working and what people can tell about your prototype and can make it better also so you have like a instant feedback right yeah i also love your idea to just uh, take the thing put it on a card or like carry it if it's small enough and going surrounding like in the neighborhood and uh, introduce it to people um that's wonderful and i reflected a bit around uh, like local knowledge and what this can mean and it's amazing to to hear um, what you're doing in terms of local and global um because the the, the local neighborhoods, the different kinds of um, um, communities, also indigenous communities um, that you're working with uh, bring in uh, super important knowledge. And then the uh, global community of, for example, commons practitioners or open hardware makers or um, people in open healthcare. Like there's so many different uh, communities that connect through the internet and where they um, bring in knowledge you can integrate and then it's maybe not local in the classical sense of the word but it's like a specialized uh, community that is connecting globally and that can still um, be an important input uh, for your work because maybe somebody in another country already created a very similar um project like yours and you can learn from each other and yeah i think that's super beautiful so i don't see raise hands so far i would say this is your chance now you can also still write in the chat and you can also share questions that come up later like for everybody who now um, listens to the session after it's been recorded. Um, you can always write us uh, also in the WhatsApp group. We can uh, relay questions also to Georgia. We can link to resources. Um, that is always nice. And I have one last question to Georgia, which is uh, which task would you give people to reflect on or to try out in the coming weeks? Well, um, I think it would be nice for them. I mean, I don't know if you, I mean, just one thing is that I'm really open that if you wanna have one to ones with me later in uh, specific questions, you can reach out to me. Uh, but um, I think it's a good, um, I think it's never, uh, never too much to ask ourselves while we are developing uh, prototypes, uh, and ideas for social impact to understand why are we doing what we are doing and uh, for who and, 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 and see if we can have, you know, if the answers have changed since the beginning and, um, uh, and also understand, you know, if, if the people that we are developing the prototypes for are for ourselves and for some others, and who are them, you know, and how, you know, what kind of, you know, uh, um, difficulties they have, but also what kind of solutions they have already, you know? I think one thing that is really important is like 
to see how people have been coping with that difficulty because usually people have been developing solutions even sometimes we think it's you know of course it's not the ideal solution it's not a good solution or, or in terms of dignifying lives for example and sometimes we have social and political contexts that are not uh, a good you know for us but it's important to say okay so how are they surviving this there's something there look for it you know and, and look for it and 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 investigate that and sometimes it's invisible sometimes it's uh, spiritual sometimes is you know intuitive uh usually it's the common that people are sharing that makes them laugh so how do you bring that into into your uh into your work and how can you be at service of that and not make people at your service, you know? I think it's really the contrary of, you know, uh, because then we really are co-creating the solution together. And sometimes we don't have these answers. Yes, to shower. This is, maybe Ricardo can say what's to shower. I think it's really nice. But I think sometimes we don't have these answers, but just to make these questions, I think, are really important for, for us, you know, also to investigate among ourselves, you know, what's motivating us and uh, what would be success for us. Is success for us the same thing as success for, for the people that we're working with? It doesn't have to, but I'm just asking, you know. How do you measure success for yourself and for, for the people that are involved in it? Is it the same? 